I've got to show, show our audience some of these wonderful right. photos. Now, this one is one of my favorites, and this was taken at the White House. Yeah, yeah, I was in the Oval Office Taking in the White House, it. and uh, uh, you know, I think everybody's always want, wanted to meet a president. <laughs> now, Congressman Duncan Hunter, who was the uh, chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, said, you know, you ought to give your uh, hat to the president, because the hat has been kind of my logo oh, sure. all through these right. years. And so uh, he arranged uh, for me to meet to Ronald Reagan in 1987 in the Oval Office. And, and, you know, I said, what are you going to do when you talk to the leader of the free world? What are you going to talk about? Well, I said, talk about what you know. And so I talked about broadcasting. You're only supposed to have five minutes in the Oval Office when you have a visit with the president. But we got ten minutes because he started talking about his broadcast career. <laughs> and it was great. And I want to tell you what a great sport he is to put the hat on. And, yes. you know, he, he, he was never, it was wonderful about him. He was always willing to get down with everybody. And you know, it, it, it could couldn't have been nicer. It was just wonderful. And of course, I know his son, Michael Reagan, and uh, Michael, as a matter of fact, got that picture signed. Uh, oh, that, that's dad. fantastic. Now, we got some more photos here. Now, take a look at this. Okay, what do we got? This is, uh, oh, I love this picture. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, I was doing an MC job uh, for uh, uh, Archie Moore was being honored uh, at a dinner, and of course, the guest of honor was Muhammad Ali. That's my buddy John Fuel next to him. He's a big fight fan. Yeah. So uh, that picture was taken after the, uh, and, we, and we got along famously. And look at this guy. Oh, yeah. That was uh, Uncle Milty, Milton Berle at the Emmy Awards. And uh, and look at that cigar. I yeah. wonder if that, you know, that's a fine cigar. Yeah, man, that's a, <laughs> a, that's, that's a <laughs> weapon. <laughs> Uncle Milty, I remember we did a, uh, we did a show together. Oh, the, and then Elton John. Elton John, that was uh, at uh, Tower Records in Hollywood. And, uh, you know, when, when you meet some of these stars, you've never met them before, you wonder how they're going to be. Right. And uh, he couldn't have been nicer. I mean, he was wonderful. And uh, I asked guy, interviewed him, and the interview went great. And uh, What is, uh, t tell me about a boss jock. Now, I mean, you've been in this radio uh, deal for an awfully long time. What is a boss jock? Well, you know, boss radio uh, was uh, a Top guy... Top 40, right? Was it Top 40? Well, Top 40 actually became before boss radio. Uh, a guy by the name of Bill Drake uh, started boss radio. And uh, uh, it, it was all over the country in, in selected cities. And basically, they used the Johnny Man jingles. They used that big open like you, you, you heard at the top. And uh, Shotgun Tom Kelly. Well, yeah, and the jingle. Now, the, 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 they also used the Johnny Man singers. Those were the Johnny Man singers that sang that jingle. And I got to actually be in the studio when they sang it. It was really <laughs> great. And so basically, it was the formula. Basically, uh, what Boss Radio is, is, is deliver the music uh, to the people. And, uh, and, and make the, the conversation short. But, you know, it's the music's the star, and the disc jockey is the seasoning. You oh, know? absolutely. Yeah. Now, I, I've got to ask you about what's happened to oldies radio. Now, all of us, all the boomers here, we love oldies radio, yeah. and it's just kind of went away. What, what's the deal on that? Well, you know, it really hasn't gone away. As a matter of fact, in some cities, you, you were right, it has disappeared, like in New York City, uh, they took away WCBS FM, right. but we have a wonderful president of CBS Radio who owns K Earth 101. Uh, his name is Dan Mason, and uh, he said, "Okay, uh, we're going to bring Boomer Radio back to New York City." And he brought WCBS FM back online. That was, a, it was and it's, and they're doing it right now. Also in San Francisco, uh, he did the same thing. He's, he's got uh, the great classic hits. They call them the greatest hits of San Francisco, the greatest hits of New York. We play the greatest hits on earth in Los Angeles. And as a matter of fact, my program director, Johnny Kay, is the architect for that. We play 60s and 70s hits. Yeah. So, so, so let me get this straight. The word oldies does not, is no longer cool? Um, it's you know, in Los Angeles, you got to be cool, cool, right? I mean, well, it's, a, you know. It's, a, you know, uh, basically, it, the oldies are the greatest hits. Okay. So that's what it, it, it's kind of evolved, because now we, uh, we, we play music from 64 up to, uh, you know, 74, and maybe a couple of seasoned in, a couple of 80s, but it's mostly 60s and 70s at our station. In New York City, it's 60s, 70s, and, and a few 80s in there, and they're doing real well. I want to tell you all how important the oldies are to everybody, to all ages. Now, when people call your request line, yeah. you're getting little kids calling up. Dad. I am. I was getting the teenagers. I, 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 it's unbelievable. They didn't live through that music. They just start hearing it, and it's new to them. Okay, we've heard it over and over again to right. us, right. but to to an 18 year old, to a 24 year old, it's brand new, and 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 even younger. And 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 first of all, let's face it, uh, the greatest hits are wholesome hits. Right. I mean, you know. Yeah, everybody, can, the whole family can listen to them. Right? <laughs> that is Mick, exactly Mickey, right. Mickey, you, 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 of course, all these songs, of course, are part of your life too. Absolutely. I have a 12-year-old granddaughter who is now in love with the Beatles. 
Ooh. loves the Beatles. Can you blame her? Oh. I mean, yeah, you can't blame her. No, you can't blame <laughs> her. But the thing about music, and I say this in my book, and I believe you'll attest to this, yeah. music is not something you listen to, it's something you experience. Yeah. And when you have physical sensations and feelings from that music, that is means you've really heard that song, the depth and soul. Mm. And that's what the oldies are for us. Exactly, or the greatest hits. You know, I got, I got a, yes, I, I premiered, world premiered the song uh, uh, by John Lennon. And uh, imagine. Well, yeah, that's exactly I, I, what imagine, it was. Right. Well, I, I was imagine. a little nervous. I was a little nervous because you know we were supposed imagine. to world premiere this thing. I was going to be the first disc jockey in the world to play this particular song, and of course it, it fell on my show. I said, ladies and gentlemen, we're world premiering the brand new John Lennon song, the first time in the world, right here on this radio station and that brand new John Lennon song and I looked at the title because the program director kind of wrote it right. on what they call perks. He just, he didn't type it. He wrote, wrote it. it. He wrote hand it. wrote it. And I looked at it and I was trying to sound it out. You know, I went to Catholic school and the nun said, sound it out, Thomas. So I sounded, <laughs> So anyway, I said, that brand new John Lennon song, you're all going to love it's world premiere right here on the Shotgun Tom Gilly Show, Imogene. <laughs> Shotgun Tom Kelly. Yeah. You better believe it, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to come back? You're going to come back. Only right? if you want me to. Right, we want Only you to come if you back. want me Let's take a break. We'll be back. <laughs> Big laugh. There's Kenny Kane coming up right after this on the Boomer Show. We'll be right back. <laughs> How about that? Hey. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, coming up, uh, uh, our, our, our special guest, comedian Kenny Kane. And, and now that we have a professional announcer here, I thought, oh. I thought oh. we would do, introduce Kenny properly. Now, who were you talking we, about? Who, yeah, what? Well, <laughs> we well, we'll switch places. Ta Shotgun Tom, you come over here. Am and, I coming over and, there? And, and, and uh, oh, I want to tell everybody, Shotgun Tom, bobblehead, yeah. ball, ShotgunTomKelly. Yeah, you can go to ShotgunTomKelly.com and check it there out. There you go. Okay. okay. All right, so, so let's switch places. You oh, come oh, over really? here, and you, and you be the host oh, and introduce, wow. you introduce Kenny Kane. Okay. Properly. All right, here we go. Sit, All right. right here, bud. That's All right. All right. Check it, it out, baby. Right. Let's, let's give him a shot. Okay. You want to believe this? Okay, here we go. You ready to go? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. All right, Brian's next guest is a regular at the Improv and the Laugh Factory. He's appeared at the Comedy Store in Los Angeles and Las Vegas. He's also been called across between Robin Williams, Steve Martin, and Jim Carrey. Get ready for some high energy, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome comedian Kenny Kane. Yeah!